Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is an episode of my series called Make It a Chord Melody. We are working on the art and the craft of chord melody on the guitar, arranging them, improvising with them. We're playing melodies and harmonizing and supporting those melodies with chord shapes. Everywhere the melody exists, we have a chord shape to support it so we can hear the harmony and the melody at the same time and so we can work out the theory and the shapes and the technique. It's a really fun time. Check out the whole series with the link in the description. We've done a bunch of jazz chord melodies. And then in the last video, we did Long Black Veil, just a simple country song with triads, one, four, and five chords. Um, and the result was really cool. So check out all those other videos. And in this video, we're gonna do Don't Think Twice by Bob Dylan. So I'm gonna talk about what this progression does a little bit, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. And I will give you chord shapes and diagrams as we go so you can work on this for yourself if you like. So here's the part we're gonna do. It ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. If you don't know by now. It ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe You'll never do somehow I want to talk about what this chord progression does for a second, and I can refer you to some videos that go into depth on a few of the things that it's doing. Uh, one, this first chord change is a classic inversion movement from a major chord to the five chord. This is just A, but a first inversion. And I have videos on that uh, composing with inversions and breaking them down, two videos that I recommend, composing with inversions and just my inverted chords video to learn more about that. This is just B minor here, and then this is B minor still with A in the bass going dun, dun, leading to G and then to the five chord A again. So it's the one chord, five chord first inversion, six chord, just B minor, and then this dun, dun, bass note walks down to connect to the four chord, which is G, five chord, which is A. And in my little example, dun, 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 I walked up back to the D chord again. I have a video about walking between chords like that. So if you're interested, check that out, link in the description. And then we have one chord, five chord first inversion, six chord, same thing. And this time, instead of going dun, 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 it goes dun, dun, dun. Okay, so this is a first inversion E dominant seventh chord. It's just E dominant seven with G sharp in the bass. I bring that up because I have a video about chromatic chords. This goes out of the key. It's called a chromatic chord. It's called a secondary dominant. So I have a video all about that. And I just wanted to let you know that's what's going on with that. So we know what the progression is. Let's look into the melody. It's so simple. Okay, this is one, three, five of D. Three, 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 five, 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 three, one of D major scale. One, 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 seven, one, two. This is how I'm thinking of scales all the time with numbers like this. Three, 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 five, 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 three, one. One, 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 five. Okay, so that's the melody. So it's coming from a D major scale. So I like to kind of map out the melody on the top few strings and then make sure I see the scale around it. Make sure I can really see those notes, like you can just hop to them, see it as a scale shape, kind of work that out so you have an easier time um, you know, finding the melody back. Let's go ahead and add chord shapes to every instance of the melody. So the first chord is D and the first note is this, so. Okay, and then the next note is, but the chord goes to this first inversion A. We're not worried about the inversion, that's a bass movement thing. We're just worried about some sort of harmony that works. So now we have. A shape and then it goes back to this note but the chord is now B minor so we can do this just three note triads when I'm doing chord melodies with triads I'm keeping the notes three notes at first and check out the other videos in the series for more in-depth explanation of what I mean by that B minor also B minor so I'm going from this shape to this shape I'm just strumming them Okay, and I played this shape with my third finger free so then it could just easily shift, right? So I jumped to this shape. So quick little side note, people often ask, um, and when I have chord charts and stuff, I, I don't put finger numbers in because if, I, if we said the way to play this chord is with these three fingers, well, that doesn't account for context of where in any actual piece of music you might be going to next. So the fingering always is contextual as far as where you're coming from, where you're going to, so. Okay, 
now we're going to the G chord. So G. A. So just following the melody as we know it and the chords as we know it at the same time. And then if I want that sound in my head, I want to hear. I want to hear that. So even with this shape, I'll go. Well, that note the pinky's playing right there is the the root. That's B. I can actually get that little movement there. So. Okay, let's work out how that chord is different the second time though. Okay, so we have to figure out this like this E7 chord. This is the third, this is the fifth, and this is the flat seven of E7. And when it goes to that note, that's just uh, the root of A, which you can make A7 if you want. So let's play that all pieced together nice and slowly. Notice how I play this and then fill in the note. That's that kind of musical arrangement thing where at first I'm just concerned with what is the shape, right? And I might go. Kind of chord, 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 and then make it more musical and kind of arranged after that. It can serve as a solo guitar sound. And if you wanted to fill it out even more, you could play, you know, Root notes, low notes, bigger chords, start to arrange and, and get creative with it in that way. Even just a few songs like this go a long way for just playing some background music somewhere. Um, I used to play a lot of gigs and I still do sometimes and the gigs I like the most are where it's just me get to you know squeeze into a corner somewhere with the guitar and, and just play whatever I want. And uh, having even just a few arrangements like this to play uh, goes a long way. And it's cool to have a few of these little arrangements up your sleeve. If you want a PDF resource of some chord melodies and solo guitar arrangements, you can get my solo guitar arrangement pack for free. There's a link in the description to get it, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon. It includes a few chord melody arrangements using the same kind of concepts that I'm talking about in this whole series. And it has a few solo guitar arrangements as well that are more kind of finger picking or classic based um, really cool resource if you want to grab that if you've watched this whole series already and you want something to watch next right now definitely check out my video where I analyze the intro to a John Mayer song because in that intro we, we break down the triad shapes that we used here in this arrangement and that we would use in any chord melody arrangement that's using uh, triad chords it's a very thorough video that would help with the vocabulary of those chord inversions all over the fretboard so I'll put a link to that on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube or you can get to it with the link in the description I post a new lesson video every week I'm gonna do a couple more chord melody videos as part of this series and we're going back to jazz tunes next week we're going to arrange the jazz standard Misty. It's going to be a beautiful arrangement. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.